Okay, let's talk about Z-Meds, the most widely prescribed class of sleeping medications, which include compounds such as Zolpidem, Zopaclone, and Zaloplon, brand names Ambien, Lunesta, and Sonata, respectively. Z-Meds were intended to replace benzodiazepines for insomnia, because although benzodiazepines could induce sleep, they often resulted in next-day impairments, produced off effects such as muscle relaxation and anxiolysis, and had a dependence liability that upon cessation could cause severe withdrawal. So for this reason, Z-Meds were developed to be sleep-specific, despite being called non on benzodiazepine, Z-meds still interact with benzodiazepine sites on GABA-A receptors. However, Z-meds are subtype selective, which allows them to target receptors associated with sedation and sleep rather than muscle relaxation and dependence. Over the course of about a decade, three got approved and were extremely successful. Early research showed that unlike benzodiazepines, Zaloplon and Zolpidem didn't negatively affect sleep architecture and even seemed to improve it without tolerance or dependence at therapeutic doses. In the following decade, they were pretty rapidly prescribed to vulnerable populations such as the elderly, for whom benzodiazepines were previously unsuitable. However, despite the initial fervor, it became pretty obvious in this same time frame that these medications were not silver bullets for insomnia. Correlations between Z-meds and depression started to emerge, as did those for cancer, all-cause mortality, and motor vehicle accidents. But perhaps more worryingly, it was estimated that 3% of Zolpidem users were likely to break a bone because of the psychomotor impairment. It's for this reason that even to this day, certain medical authorities strongly recommend against their use in the elderly. It also became apparent that these medications greatly increased the risk of upper respiratory tract infections. Okay, moving on to the compounds themselves. Obviously, Zolpidem or Ambien is by far the most societally well-known Z medication and is responsible for this hilarious tweet. It has a half-life of about 3 hours, which is significantly less than most benzodiazepines, and it has no active metabolites. Pharmacologically, its affinity for alpha-1 containing subtypes of the GABA-A receptor, which is thought to mediate the sedative and pro-sleep effects of benzodiazepines, is tenfold higher than its affinity for alpha-2 containing subtypes, the anxiety-reducing GABA-A receptor. Accordingly, it has very strong hypnotic effects with minimal muscle relaxation and anxiolysis. And here's a picture of it completely shutting down the prefrontal cortex, which might explain the questionable decisions some people make on it. Okay, moving on to Zaloplon. Zaloplon has a half-life of only one hour, making it the shortest acting sleep medication ever. And because of this, it almost never causes next-day impairment. In fact, the US military allows pilots to take it four hours before operating operating an aircraft. But conversely, because of its short duration of action, it doesn't really help with sleep maintenance, but rather sleep initiation. Okay, now let's talk about the disaster that is Zopaclone. In the process of trying to make a selective benzodiazepine successor, the developers of Lunesta somehow managed to create a compound that's equally as unselective as benzodiazepines, has barbiturate-like properties, and in addition to having a 5-hour half-life, which is the longest of any Z-Med, it also has an active metabolite that is alpha-2 selective, so anxiety-specific, which is the exact opposite of what they were going for, and an antagonist to nicotinic acetylcholine receptors. For a medication that was developed for sleep, a hammer would probably be more selective in its mechanism of action. And it also disrupts sleep architecture similarly to benzodiazepines. Another pharmaceutical company tried to remedy this by isolating its isomer as Zopaclone, which is equally as disastrous, but has more clinical data to show that this is the case. An FDA review found that although as Zopaclone reduced sleep onset by 15 minutes, it did not improve next day functioning, and subjects that took Nesta still met the criteria for insomnia on the medication. The development of s zopoclone was such a blatant attempt at evergreening Zopoclone that the European Medicines Agency didn't even count it as a new medication. If you're interested in learning more, here's a similar video I have on benzodiazepines, and I'll upload a longer version of this video to my YouTube channel. But otherwise, stay safe and do your research.